Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. And in this one, I do have another paint with me. But this one's a little bit different. I'm actually going to be going over the process of how I usually start and begin a painting. So I didn't notice how much I left on this palette last time I was using it. So I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. Okay, and now with that out of the way, we can finally start on the actual painting. So usually if I'm painting a figure, which usually I am, I start off with the shadows. Just because I like to get the general feel of the face, like 3D wise. And you know, watercolor is all about layers. And generally I like to kind of get like the darker parts of it laid down first. Just because later I know I'm gonna like do a glaze of the general skin tone and my tip for watercolor is to try and work fast just because depending on the type of paper you're using uh, it might really soak up and drink the watercolor very quickly and then it makes it really hard to blend later and you can kind of see here that I'll kind of go over with my color and then I'll take a clean a wet brush and use that to kind of blend out the edges just so it's not so harsh of a line because when you're painting people you just want a lot of really nice clean gradients a lot of smooth blending depending on you know your character and your subject but here I'm painting a pretty young guy so I don't want any super harsh lines other than like the cast shadow underneath his chin and then the soft shadow underneath his bangs because the light source is above him. And then with his jacket, I just made a really clean and even wash just because I'm getting the local color down. And with watercolor, it's kind of all about layering. You're gonna be going over a section multiple times just so that you can really build up the value because unlike oil painting and acrylic and most other mediums like that, your white is the white of the paper. So generally you don't want to put some really harsh and dark colors down at first because you're going to lose that, that white, that lightness in the painting. And watercolor also dries a lot lighter than when it is first laid on the paper. As you can see with his shoulder, it's a lot lighter than you know underneath where it's still wet. And generally, you want to do a lot of your blending while the painting is still wet. So depending on how much water you use, like I said, you have to use, you have to work fast. And so in the hair, you can see I kind of have a highlight color I put in the middle. It's kind of a yellowish color. And then I kind of filled it out with the actual local color of the hair, which is going to be like a dark brown black. But this is just the first layer. I think I put like four more layers onto the hair to really build up that definition. And then here, now that the first shadow layer is dry, I'm just kind of going in and just defining some of the shadows around, the, you know, the nose bridge and the eye. And I really like giving my characters like eye bags. I don't know why, but it really just kind of fills out the face a bit more. It kind of makes their eyes have a bit more of dimension. And you know, my process is really just all about small layers it's only the first couple you know paint strokes that really lay down a lot of color and value and then after that i really just spend my time detailing and just getting the image in my mind onto the paper with watercolor it's kind of unforgiving you can't really just paint over it like you would with acrylic or oil you have to really know what you were doing before you put your brush to the paper 
because you can try all you want to lift the watercolor back up but you're just gonna ruin the paper and it's still gonna leave a mark depending on the color you lay down skin tone you can kind of get away with but the paper i use today um, doesn't really lift that well and it is the arches 300 gsm cold press paper it's quite an expensive paper but i really love it it's kind of like a standard in the industry i have been holding on to my pad of arches watercolor paper that i got like four years ago because i'm too afraid to like mess up that's kind of stupid if I'm going to buy something and then only use it four years later. So that's why I decided to whip it out for this one. Now I'll quickly go over how I actually got the sketch onto the paper. So I first, you know, stretched it out by soaking it in the water for 15, 20 minutes and then letting that sit overnight. And then I transferred the sketch I originally made on just a regular piece of paper onto this one by using a light box. I originally wanted to just print out the sketch right directly onto the paper with my printer, but it wasn't big enough, so I had to make do with what I had. The pencil I used was a red cola erase, just because red looks really good under watercolor, especially if you're doing a figure. And you know, an erasable colored pencil because I never get things right on the first try and I'm gonna have to erase it, which I did multiple times. I actually forgot to get it on camera, but I did just do a glaze with a kind of yellow orangish skin tone over the entire skin part. And it really, you know, harmonized, harmoni harmo har it really harmonized all of the skin tone. And I'm just sad I didn't get it on video, but it's kind of self-explanatory. I just took a really light brush and painted it all over the shadows and everything just to unify all the colors. It was looking a bit red and highlightery before. And the scariest part is always using the really fine, fine brush like I am here because I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up and I kind of do have coffee hands. They're really shaky. I can't live without my coffee. And that kind of bites me in the ass sometimes when I need to do this really fine detailed work. This time it thankfully worked worked out nicely. I always save the highlights last, so that's why the eyes don't have the highlight or anything, just because it's, it's a little reward, you know? And then here I am starting to layer the hair again. And recently I've developed a style of how I want to render hair in the future. And it's very similar to how I render my hair digitally. And it's kind of all about starting off with your highlight and that's the yellow part of this guy's hair in my case and just building up the layers around it and just making each layer a little bit further from the highlight and a little bit darker each time and it just really creates this nice dimension without you having to you know individually draw each single strand of hair which is really unrealistic and i think most artists actually recommend that you don't do that because the biggest thing about painting and art is that you're just giving the illusion of there being lots of detail with trying to make the least amount of brush strokes necessary or else you just go crazy trying to draw every single strand but unless you're really into hyper realism then go ahead but i'm too lazy for that and then this was the last layer i did i only did three layers of the dark hair part and that was enough to really get the the shadow, the actual local color of the hair to show through, which was a really dark brown, almost black color. And I'm actually really happy with how the hair turned out in this case, because usually hair is like my least favorite thing to render. But, you know, I've gotten used to it. It's essential if I want to continue my road down figure and portraiture. And this is probably, again, the third layer I've done over the eyes and the eyelashes. What I've learned over the years is that less is really more when it comes to eyes. You know, usually you just want to get in there with a really dark black color and really define the eyes and the eyelashes. But generally you want to make the eyelashes the same color as the darkest part of your painting because nothing in life is ever completely black. And if you do do that, unless you're painting digitally or 
your painting is just very, very, very dark in general, it's going to look very uncanny, especially in my case here, because it's quite a, quite a light painting. The values don't go that dark other than the eyes and the hair, which are going to be the darkest parts of the painting. Here I am doing another layer on the jacket just to really define its form and shape. And I will say I love this brush. I recently got it from my local art store and it was on sale because it's originally a very expensive brush, at least to me. It's originally $112 and I got it for 60, which is crazy. And you also might be thinking I'm crazy for spending $60 on a brush, but it is genuine squirrel hair or something like that. And I can tell the difference immediately. It holds so much water. It blends so well. And you saw me fill up that area so quickly, right? I would take me ages to do that before. And it just lets me get a really even wash of color. But I used really, really cheap brushes for so many years that don't think that you need a really expensive and nice brush to achieve what I'm doing or what my favorite artist is doing because they also started off with very, very, very cheap stuff. You can really see the form of the jacket taking shape now. It has a lot more dimension. And that's all just because we really developed the layers on it. And then here I am kind of blocking out the general color for the background. I started off with the light yellow just because I want to retain that really warm atmosphere. My idea for this painting was just, you know, this guy, photographer, on a sunny day was just in the trees, just wanting to take a picture. And it was a sunny day, so then the sun is casting a shadow on the top of his face, in the trees around him. But there wasn't really any crazy concept. I just wanted to draw a fun, cute scene. I'm a firm believer that, you know, just like tattoos and everything, that paintings don't really need a super deep and meaningful meaning. Sometimes you just want to draw a cute girl or a cute guy or just some trees and leaves and you just need a figure to put in front of it. And for this photo mainly, I just got some new gouache paints and I really wanted to try them out in like a floral foresty scene and I wanted a subject and I just wanted to draw my comfort zone which is people you know me just creating a painting out of my sketchbook and like a full-fledged piece is really a big step in the direction that I want to be going to and regarding the background like I said I got these new acrylic wash paints by Holbein and I wanted to test them out and it was my first time so that's why the background probably isn't the greatest background you've ever seen I probably could have spent a lot more time on it, but I just really enjoyed the paints. I really, really liked how opaque they were and how smooth they were and the fact that I could use them with my watercolor brushes. And my whole goal with the background was just to really show a lot of depth in the foliage. I started off with some really dark colors, a dark wash of watercolor, and then slowly built up the value and the brightness of the color. And it all really came together just to frame his face really well. Where the shadow is on the side of his face is also a shadow in the foliage, but then it's surrounded by this bright sunny leaves. Here I am trying to paint the camera and I wanted to do it in gouache just because I felt like a camera is a very opaque and dark subject. Uh, if I tried to do it in watercolor, it would take too many layers and I just wasn't sure I had the precision enough to not make any mistakes with it. The great thing about gouache is that you can go over parts because it's opaque. You, you can cover any mistakes you might have made earlier and get a really clean edge. I wasn't really feeling confident going into this, but overall I think the painting turned out really well. All that's left is just the highlights, which I think is both mine and everyone's favorite part. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did like making it. I'm really starting to enjoy filming my process and getting out of my comfort zone for you guys. And stay tuned to the end to see the final product. And I'll see you all next week, okay?